here I am in the middle of the night, all alone. The clock ticks. All I hear is the howl of the wind, the footsteps of the dark. These pages turn again. Walking, tears falling on my boots I remember all the times That you kept me on the bridge Ready to jump by, close my eyes There you are, here I am Only Jesus there for me Every single vice, none of them as sweet as you. Before you came into my life, I was on an endless search to fill my empty lonely soul I tried and tried could not find again Walking tears falling on my boots I remember all the times that you kept me Ready to jump, I close my eyes. I was abandoned, left alone, and forgotten by everyone. Here you are, here I am. Only Jesus there for me. I am not crazy. Gaze a little hazy, coming clear at all. I won't go the distance if you won't go with me. Here you are, here I am. Only Jesus there for me. I'm not crazy. Every 
sing your praise. One of them as sweet as you. Amen. 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 That song is called Only Jesus. And now we got a special message from Mr. Wayne Sorrell. And that was him that helped me out on clearing in. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah, thank you. Kind of funny. Kind of couple squares, too. That's okay. All right. So here we go. Uh, so good, uh, what is evening? Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever it happens to be. Uh, we're glad to be back again. It's been a while for us. Uh, you know, we've had other things, uh, you know, taken away from our time. But we're back again. Uh, the Craig, Craig and Wayne show. Well, actually, it's the... Dynamic duel for the glory of God. So it's not about us. It's about Jesus in us and how we can glorify his name and you know, do his will and kind of just be there for him and, and do whatever we can to please him. So in regards to the message, I actually want to do something a little different than I normally do. And uh, one of my favorite uh well, first, I got to start out with the prayer, so let me do that. So, Father God, we do come before your grace, Lord, and we do thank you for all you do in our lives, Lord. We thank you that you're able to use us in a servant kind of way, Lord, where we can uh, do things according to your will and your way, Lord, that we would walk according to your ways, not our own, Lord, that your will would be done in our lives so that we could bless others. Lord, uh, help us to... Uh, uh, this, through this message, Lord, and, and through the music, that we could uh, maybe touch somebody's heart, Lord. And uh, again, I ask that the Holy Spirit be with us and help through this message. And I pray this all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Back with the hat. So, it's good to be back. Uh, uh, getting really close to Christmas. So this will be... Ah, we'll call it a Christmas message. What do you think, Greg? Yeah, I think it's Christmas. Christmas message. No, actually, I better turn to a. I gotta turn to Jeremiah. So, bear with me here, Jeremiah. Where are you, buddy? The reason I picked Jeremiah is because I, I really like him a lot, and I, I kind of relate to him a little bit in the way. I was kind of shy in the, the beginning of my walk with the Lord, and I actually was. You know, anybody that knew me four years ago would know me as a person that basically uh, I was shy. I would sit down in the corner of the church, and when church was over, I'd get up and walk out. I wouldn't say boo to anybody. <laughs> but you know, the Lord's changed me in a, in a mighty way, and I'm thankful for that. So I want to start out in uh, Jeremiah, and I'm going to take it from verse 1, and I'm only going to do about... Ten verses or so, but I I want you to hear about how I can how I personally relate to this man because he was a young young guy as, as opposed to me being an old, old guy. Um, so here here's what it goes: the call of Jeremiah in first visions. The, these are the words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests from the town of Anathoth. In the land of Benjamin, the Lord first gave messages to Jeremiah during the 13th year of the reign of Josiah. Josiah was a really good king. He was the son of Ammon, king of Judea. The Lord's message continued throughout the reign of King Jehoiakim. Now, he wasn't such a great king. Josiah's son, under the 11th year of the reign of King Zedekiah, another of Joshua's son, Josiah's son, so, in August of that 11th year, um, let me see, I lost something. The people of Jerusalem were taken away as captives. So, Jeremiah's call in first visions start here. And the Lord gave me this message. This is Jeremiah speaking. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb, the Lord says. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you in the as my prophet to the nations. O sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. The Lord replied, don't say I'm too young, for you must go wherever I send you and whatever I tell you, and don't be afraid of the people. 
for I will be with you and will protect you. Though I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth. Jeremiah is speaking again. Touched his mouth. And look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some of you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. Then the Lord said to me, look, Jeremiah, what do you see? And he replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. And the Lord said, that's right. And it means that I am watching and I will certainly carry out all my plans. Then the Lord spoke to me again and said, what do you see now? And I replied, I see a pot of boiling water spilling from the north. Yes, the Lord said, for terror from the north will boil out on the people of the land. Listen, I am calling the armies of the kingdoms of the north to come to Jerusalem. I, the Lord, have spoken. So that's kind of the uh, intro to the story of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was, as you see in the beginning, he was quite timid, as was I. Now, I'm not saying I'm a Jeremiah by any means. Um, but he, uh, at an older age, when I was, uh, and a lot of people from the old church know about this, uh, but I was very, I was kind of timid and quiet. But God did something special to my heart. Just like he spoke to uh, uh, Jeremiah and let him know that he was there for him. And he gave him different little situations such as he touched his mouth and he was able to speak with a boldness whenever he had to reach out to the uh, disobedient Israelites. And, uh, and he had to tell them things that he did not like. Uh, and, and I feel that I've been, uh, he's made me a somewhat bold in the way I do things, but not, he also has told me to be gentle in the way I do things. Like in uh, Philippians, Four or five, it says, let your gentleness be evident to all men. The Lord is at hand. And I do. I try to be gentle when I do the things I do, as do, do the uh, people that I uh, minister to. So, but Jeremiah, I mean, it's a, it's a long story about Jeremiah, but uh, I, I'll just uh, give you a couple of highlights. You know, he was, he was, he, he, and it says this in the Bible, he earned the name and title of the weeping prophet. And he, he earned it. And that word had meant, meant so much because it wasn't something that just was called on him. He earned that call. Why was he like that? First of all, he wanted to do God's will. But on the other hand, he loved the people that he had to deal with. But he had to tell them very harsh things. And sometimes we have to do that as Christians. Uh, uh, tell, tell people things that maybe they don't want to hear. You know, it, it says in the Bible, faithful are the wounds of a friend. And, and I've been told that by Pastor Ken on, on different occasions where he had to speak to me. And, but he made me a better person for it. And, uh, and God used the Holy Spirit in Pastor Ken to make a difference in me. And I, in turn, have done that with certain disciples, like Craig. I mean, Craig's, Craig's like a son to me, so I'm just going to say it right up. It's been two years we've been together doing this, and it's been a real honor and pleasure to work with him. He's a tremendous musician. musician. And to even play a little bit of a clarinet with him is, is a blessing to me. But, you know, just to say it, this, that God can do amazing things to people that you would never expect would, would turn around and, and uh, have this special uh, Holy Spirit in them that would make them do things they would have never done before. You know, I've learned to, to be able to have the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, which at times takes me the extra mile. It gives me the energy and effort to go to a place where I have, haven't been able to do before. And uh, I, I don't want to go and tell you all the things that I'm doing, but you know, it's been a blessing for, for both me and Craig to do the things that we do. 
and I, I'm sure the Lord is going to use us. Uh, and I would suspect that he will continue to use us. But all in all, we want more than anything to glorify the name of the Lord. And that's what, that's what Jeremiah did. And, and he took a lot of heat for it. I mean, they tried to kill him. They did so many things to him. But, I, you know, I, I love Jeremiah. I and mean, I, mean, I, I love so many people in the Bible. And it's so important that, you know, you take the time to read the Bible, to get to know Jesus, and to get to know the different prophets. And even in the Old Testament, it's so uh, enjoyable. But in the New Testament, the Bible is just a beautiful book. It's a book of love. It's adventure. It's, but most importantly, it is definitely a book of love. Because without love, we have nothing. Without Jesus living in us, we have nothing. And if we think we're something and we, we, we uh, think we're special and we don't show love to people, we're nothing. We're like a clanging symbol, it says in 1 Corinthians 13. And I would never want to be like that. I, I want the Lord to keep me humble. I want him to keep me in a place where, you know, it's not about me, it's about him. So I thank you for listening uh, to our song and our message. And uh, we just hope and pray that you have a wonderful Christmas and Happy New Year. I'm sure we'll get back on with a another message very soon and uh, we just want to say we love you and uh, Merry Christmas and uh, we'll be praying for you. God bless you.